Hello everyone, it's Friday night. It's time for Friday Night Live. I hope you've had a great week. I am so excited to share these projects with you tonight. I absolutely love these. I think I like these ones better than the ones I showed you on Tuesday. But in any case, we are using the Under My Umbrella stamp set. So this is one that, um, as I said, I featured on Tuesday along with the coordinating punch. Um, but tonight we are only using the stamp set because we are all about simple stamping. So just stamps, ink, and paper. And I got to tell you, this is an awesome beginner stamp set. The more I played with it, the more fun I had with it. It's only $20 here in Canada, which is a great deal. And you're getting some really cute sentiments with an awesome font and then these fantastic images. So we're gonna make these three cards. I'm just going to pull up the video on my iPad so I can see who is watching with me here. There we are. All right, if you are here, let me know. Oh, Amanda is here, who else is here? Oh, Deb is here, and Julie is here, and Heather. All right, we've got some people watching with us. All right, are these not the cutest? I just, I fin when I finished making these, I was like, oh, I love these. Okay, so we're gonna start with this one. I'm gonna show you a beginner technique that's not really a beginner technique tonight. We're gonna talk about masking. Um, so if you look at this card, you see how the flowers look like they're in behind the edge of the umbrella? Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, for those of you who have been stamping for a while, you probably know how to do this. No big deal. But for those who are newer, I'm going to show you how to do it. And I'm going to give you a couple of tips. Okay, let's see. We've got Wendy here and Gail and Elfie. Wow, you guys are must be bored on a Friday night. <laughs> Friday night during social distancing. All right, so we are going to start with this one, as I said. Um, these are going to create our background panel. So we're going to do kind of do our little DIY DSP here. Um, DSP, of course, stands for designer series paper. And um, we are going to do that just by repetitively stamping the different floral images um, tone on tone. OK, so we'll start with the Melon Mambo. My color scheme for this one is this. We've got Coastal Cabana, Gorgeous Grape and Melon Mambo. So we're going to start with the Melon Mambo, and in the stamp set, there are, that's really hard to see, there are four different floral images, okay? So we are just going to use three of them tonight. I'm going to use a different one on each of the, um, of the panels, okay? So this one, I started with this, this particular image, so we're going to open up our Melon Mambo ink, and we are just going to randomly stamp this image all over this panel. Now, when you're doing random stamping, couple of tips, you wanna make sure you stamp off the edge. Whoopsie, that's not good, that's all right, that's gonna get hidden. Um, you wanna make sure you stamp off the edge and that you rotate your stamp, okay? So that it looks like it has a sense of motion. That little oopsie is not gonna matter because it's gonna get hidden. We're not gonna see it. Okay, so that's that one done. We'll get that out of the way and we'll close this up so we don't have a disaster. Hi Debbie, how are you? Um, okay, so then we're gonna do our gorgeous grape. And for this one, I'm gonna use a little, uh, the smaller, the smallest, I should say, um, floral. So I'm stamping tone on tone with the gorgeous grape. So same thing here. We are going to make sure we are rotating our stamp and stamping off the edge so that we get a really random look. Okay. I am very excited to see that this stamp set is in the new upcoming annual catalog because it is a good one. It is a great one, I gotta say. Hey Julie, how are you? Thank you for sharing. Hey Laura Bart, how are you doing? All right, finally, we're gonna do our Coastal Cabana and I'm gonna pull in a different, that's not the right stamp set. Oh, or stamp, oh well, doesn't matter. We'll use this one, does not matter. Okay. So again, we're going to stamp randomly all the way across our panel. And for some reason, I'm not getting, you know why? Because I am, I don't have my mat underneath me and I am, my pad of paper here is getting very thin. I need to get my stamp and pierce mat. Okay, so we have our background done. I'm gonna show you how to glue it. So just to give you the dimensions on each one of these strips, each one of these is one and three quarters inches by four, 
okay? And that gives you, when you put them all side by side like this, it actually gives you a four by five and a quarter inch layer, okay? So we're going to glue that onto a uh, granny apple green piece of cardstock. This is five and three eighths by four and one eighth, okay? So when I go to layer these on here, we're going to start with the Mellow Mambo and get it exactly where we want it. And you're gonna see when I get these all laid out that that's gonna create a great little background panel, okay? So we're gonna start with the Melon Mambo. I'm gonna use liquid glue because that gives me my wiggle time when I'm trying to get these lined up just so. So I'll get this one on and get it exactly. This is the most crucial one, right? Because all the others are gonna butt up right against it, so. Okay, so that one's on. And then we're gonna do our gorgeous grape. I am all about, have you noticed lately, I am all about the bright, happy colors. I am so ready for spring. Spring still hasn't shown up here in Southern Ontario. It's still freezing cold. I am so over it. I need some sun and I need temperatures warm enough that I can sit on my deck. That would be really, really nice. It would make social distancing much easier if I could be outdoors. Okay, so there is my background panel. It's not super quick and easy. So then I'm going to glue this to my card base. Hi Krista, how are you doing? Uh, my card base is five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. This is thick whisper white cardstock. I like the thick um, for card bases because it's quite a bit sturdier than the regular whisper white. Um, it's not required, but I personally prefer it. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of adhesive. I am going to bring out my precious fast fuse. And did you have you guys heard the bump? Oh, this one's empty. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. Let's grab this one. Have you guys heard the buzz? There is new adhesive coming in the annual catalog to replace fast fuse. I am so excited. Like, can't even tell you. Uh, you may have noticed if you looked at the retirement list that posted yesterday, two days ago, two days ago, um, that snail is going away. And snail is being replaced by something called seal. And the seal is like fat, like strong like fast fuse. I am so excited about that. Okay, so there's our background. We're gonna set that aside. And we are going to work on our umbrella. So this is a two and three quarter, I think. Yes, two and three quarter inch square of Whisper White cardstock. We are going to stamp our umbrella in the Memento Black ink because we're going to use our um, blends to color it in. Oh, Krista, I tell you, <laughs> I am so over this weather, like so over it. So I'm going to ink up my umbrella. I'm going to stamp it upside down and I want to go off the edges a little bit. Again, that's going to anchor it and make it look like it's not floating. <laughs> Okay, we don't want, well, I guess floating umbrellas are a thing if the wind catches them, but um, I would prefer not to have my umbrellas floating. Okay, so I've stamped it on there in the Memento Black. Then I'm going to grab a post-it note. Okay, so with this, we are going to make our mask so that we can stamp our flowers. So I'm gonna show you a couple of tips. So first of all, you wanna make sure when you're stamping that you stamp where the sticky part of your post-it note is. Okay, if you stamp up here, when you cut it out, there will be nothing to hold it down onto your page. So we're going to stamp down near the bottom where the sticky part is. I'll cover that up for a minute. And then we're going to pull this off the pad and we're going to cut this out. Now, when you are cutting out your mask, we want to cut it out so that, actually I don't need to cut the bottom. No, we don't. Well, yeah, I do because for the next card I do. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, you want to cut it out on the inside of the line. Now, if you watched my video on Tuesday, we did some paper piecing um, with some of the gingham paper, and this is kind of the same thing. You want to make sure when you're cutting this out that, let me just get rid of this excess here, that you cut it so that you're cutting on the inside of the line, okay? That is going to make your stamped images that overlap um, look a little bit better because the thickness of the paper uh, will cause or may cause depending on how thick your post-it notes are a little bit of a gap uh, where your stamp um, overlaps it and by cutting inside the line here like on the inside edge of the line you are going to compensate for that okay 
Just trust me, it works. <laughs> I will show you in a minute. So all I'm doing is cutting out my little post-it note umbrella here. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about this bottom part yet. We will need it for another card, but for now, that's all we need. So I'm going to now line this up on my stamped umbrella, just like this, okay? And then we're gonna stamp some flowers. So I'm just gonna give these a quick, quick, quick clean because we're gonna need them. And first of all, we're gonna stamp our handle. So I'm gonna bring back the black ink and I'm gonna stamp my handle right about there, okay? And then I'm gonna bring in my flowers. Now, which ones did I use? I don't think it matters. We're gonna use these ones because honestly, it does not matter. So I'm gonna arrange some and I wanna make sure I'm overlapping um, where my mask is because that's the point, right? We want them to look like they're kind of sitting behind the edge of the umbrella. Now I'm gonna take some other flowers, some smaller ones, stamp those. And one more set of larger, sure, no, that one won't fit. We'll go with the smaller ones again. This is what happens when you change up the design on the fly. There we go, okay? Doesn't look like much right now, but when I take off my mask, voila, we have flowers in the umbrella. Isn't that cute? Hi, Karen, thanks for sharing. All right, now we're gonna do some coloring. So you will notice that we do not have a, mel a Melon Mambo Stampin' Blends. However, that is gonna change. There's one coming. <laughs> Um, so for now, and I think the reason we don't have one right now is because Lovely Lipstick, the, the light Lovely Lipstick, is very, very close to Melon Mambo. So this one is retiring. This is one of the outgoing in colors. And there is a new Melon Mambo Stampin' Blends uh, duo coming. Okay? So we're going to just color in the first panel of our umbrella. Now I decided to do them in the same order that I did them on my background. So I'm going to color just the first panel in the Melon Mambo. No, it's not. It's light, lovely lipstick. I lied. I'm getting ahead of myself. There's no Melon Mambo yet. And I'm actually gonna use the other end because my bullet tip is a little bit darker, you'll notice, <laughs> than the brush tip. And again, this is just because I've used my brush tip so much more. So we'll just go over that again and get a little bit darker. There we go. And while I've got this out, I'm going to color a few flowers as well. So let's do this guy in the pink. Sorry about the squeaking. I know that's that's one of the reasons I don't use the brush tip because I don't really love that squeaky <laughs> marker on paper sound. Um, and then let's do so let's do this little guy back here. And then we'll do we'll do this one as well. Okay, so that is our lovely lipstick, aka Melon Mambo. Then we do have Highland Heather. We don't have Gorgeous Grape, but the dark Highland Heather is very, very close to Gorgeous Grape. Thanks, Giselle. I think it's pretty cute, too. I'm going to grab my other end here. There we go. And we're going to do our Gorgeous Grape in the middle. So the center panel here. And... Again, I'm not really worried about shading on these. You could totally shade these and blend them if you like, but we're all about simple tonight, so part of simple is quick. <laughs> so I'm not gonna make you guys watch me shade these. Okay, so then again, we're gonna color a couple of flowers as well. There we go, and we'll do this guy over here as well, okay? And then we're going to come in with Coastal Cabana. And again, we don't have a Coastal Cabana Stampin' Blends. However, the light Bermuda Bay is very close to Coastal Cabana. So we are going to color the last panel of the umbrella with the, the light Bermuda Bay, which again is very close. And this end is dying. I need to replace some of my blends. They are, can you tell I use them a lot? They get worn out. Oh, this end is much better. I think it's worse. Yep. Okay, let's go back to the brush tip. Definitely time for a new Bermuda Bay. 
and I need to do it soon because starting with the new catalog we will not be carrying individual stamp and blends they will only be sold in the combo packs that was based on sales data um, most sales of the stamp and blends have been in combo packs so Stampin' Up just decided okay we're not gonna carry the duos anymore so if you need to replace any of your individual markers, you'll want to do that sooner than later. Because once they sell out of the individual markers, they will only be available in the combo packs. All right, so there we go. We've got our flowers and our umbrella colors. And then we're going to do our leaves with the dark granny apple green. And these go super quick because it literally is like two strokes with a pen and they're colored. These little bitty leaves. And the flower centers. I'll do these little guys here too. Miss that little bit. And then these guys. And the centers. There we go. So cute and so quick. All right, last thing we need to do is stamp our sentiment. So the sentiment says, life's showers bring love's flowers. Well, with all the showers we've been having around here, we, be, we should be getting lots of flowers. So that's all I can say. So we are going to stamp it in the upper right corner in the black ink, okay? And then we're gonna layer that on a granny apple green Square. So this was two and three quarters inches squared. This um, is two and seven eighths. Okay, so it's one eighth of an inch larger, just to give it a nice narrow little border. Oh, you still have the Coastal Cabana blendabilities, Julie. You are smart to keep those. I sold all my blendabilities off quite a while ago. But I have to say that um, the Bermuda Bay, the light Bermuda Bay, is pretty darn close which is, I'm, prob I'm sure that's why we don't have um, a Coastal Cabana, because the Bermuda Bay is pretty close. Okay, so that is done. We are ready to add that to the front of our cards. We'll add a couple of dimensionals. It is simple and cute, Heather, thanks. I, I am constantly amazed at how cute you can make cards using very few supplies. <laughs> And this is from someone who really likes to use all the things on all of my cards. Um, simple stamping for me is not an easy, it does not come naturally. I like lots of bling. I like ribbon and bows. Well, you know, you guys watch my videos. And uh, I just find that when you really force yourself to play and you only limit yourself to stamps, ink, and paper, it's amazing what you can do. All right, so that is card number one done. Let's get that out of the way. And I just need to clean a couple things here so that we can go on to number two. We're gonna do a little bit more masking on this one. All right, so card number two is this one. Um, I love the color scheme on this. I am loving, and this is not one that I typically use. Again, I am not a big fan of Fleur de Flamingo in general, but paired with the basic gray and the the Daffodil Delight, I really, really like it. I, it just, for me, is really cheerful. Um, yes, Heather, symbol stamping is more challenging. And, you know, we, we have all kinds of new stampers who don't have a lot of supplies, and we do all kinds of really complicated things. <laughs> and... The poor new stampers can't do them because they don't have all the stuff and they don't have $3,000 to buy all the stuff. So <laughs> we have to show what we can do with limited supplies. So this is a piece of basic gray cardstock. It is four by five and a quarter inches. Okay. And I am going to start by stamping the umbrella a few times just down the length of the cardstock. Again, I'm doing tone on tone. So I'm going to use basic gray. And again, I want to make sure that I'm kind of going randomly and not forgetting to extend off the edge. I'll put one up here, maybe like that. Okay. And I might do a little bit of one down here. Okay. So there's my umbrellas. Now we are going to bring back that mask. I'm going to just finish cutting around it here because we are going to need it. 
all the way around. Okay. So now I am going to add my mask to this umbrella to start. Okay. And I am going to bring in my little raindrop stamp. Okay. So you see how in the background, um, there's no raindrops where the umbrellas are. Okay. So this is how you're going to get those raindrops, um, not where the umbrellas are stamped. Okay. All right. So I put my mask on. I'm going to, <laughs> I just realized I'm saying mask and everybody's wearing masks these days. <laughs> it figures I would pick masking to do during a pandemic. <laughs> Anyhow, we are going to stamp our raindrops and I'm not going to worry about going over top of my umbrella because that mask is going to protect it. So I'm going to stamp all around my umbrella here. Now I can take this one off. I'm done there and I can move it over here and I can stamp this side. And again, we're going to come right down. Okay, I'm going to move my mask down here. Stick that down. And then we're going to come in here and stamp these guys. We'll add a couple there. We're going to add a couple there. I'm going to move my mask down again. So you could, if you wanted to, cut several masks and have one for each umbrella, but it's not really not necessary. Um, you can just keep moving your one mask all the way down the card as you work your way down. Not necessary to cut a whole bunch of masks. Okay, and then we're going to move this down again and cover up this little bit. And finally, we're going to do this little part here. And we'll add our mask there we go okay so now we have our umbrellas and our raindrops now we need to add our handles so for this for some reason I like to do it sideways <laughs> I don't exactly know why oh I need whoops turn my light off sorry guys um, I need my mask back should not have taken that off just yet that needs to go on there come on there we go and then we're gonna stamp our handle and when I'm stamping the handle, I always try to line it up with the little point on the umbrella because really that is a continuation of the handle, right? On an umbrella. Okay. That's how you get it centered and looking somewhat realistic. So we'll add the mask here. And again, stamp our handle. Okay. Now this one, yep, that one we're still going to need a handle. And we'll do that one there. Okay, now this guy, we're only going to get a little snippet of the handle, and that's okay. There we go. Oh, and this one down here needs a little bit too. Let's bring this in here and do this little guy. There we go. Okay, there's our background. Isn't that fun? Super quick and easy way to make um, an easy background. And again, remember when you're designing, texture and pattern are important, right? They are important elements of design. So you wanna make sure that you are adding those elements to your projects, okay? All right, so we are ready to go ahead and glue that onto our card base. Um, our card base this time is Flirty Flamingo. It is four and a quarter by 11 inches and it's scored in the middle at five and a half. So we'll fold in half along our score line. And then we're gonna go ahead and glue that down. Oh, don't tell me you're out. Don't tell me. Are you kidding me? They're dropping like flies, you guys. My poor fast fuse. <laughs> I gotta make it stretch till June. Oh my goodness. Oh, and this one's not behaving. This one's tearing up the cardstock. Wow, it's not a good fast fuse night, you guys. I may have to switch back to Tombow. All right. There we go. There's our background. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside and we are going to work on the other elements. So to start, we are going to make this little background panel here. So to do that, all I did, like this is the quickest, easiest way to make a simple background. I'm taking my light Daffodil Delight, which I'm just going to say is also getting very dry. And I'm taking the brush tip 
and I am literally going to scribble. So I'm going to take my um, marker and lay the brush tip flat and I am just going to color back and forth. Okay, I'm not worried about trying to get it super straight or even. Okay, that's literally all there is to it. <laughs> okay, super easy background. I might go a little bit higher here because I want to be, there we go. And maybe add a little more. I want it to look a little bit more random. There we go. That's it, literally. Nothing more to it, okay? Now we're gonna set that aside to dry before we stamp on it because we don't want the alcohol to smear the stamp, okay? So for now, this is just a scrap of Whisper White. We are going to stamp our umbrella. I'm gonna stamp in basic gray this time. Basic gray is one of the classic inks that you can use uh, with your Stampin' Blends, okay? There are some that you can use. Hi, Betsy, how are you doing? And to color my umbrella, I'm going to use my Flirty Flamingo Blends. Now I am gonna do some shading on this. So I'm gonna start by laying down a layer of light on one panel. So I'm gonna work on one panel at a time. That's just so that the ink doesn't dry too much in between and I can blend it. Okay, I need to use the other end of my dark because it is also getting quite dry. So I'm adding some shadow at the top and along the bottom here, just like that. And I'm going to come back with my light and I'm going to blend that out. Okay. So you really want to take the time to blend that because there is quite a contrast between the dark and the light. Okay. So in order to get that to blend out, you do have to take your time. And this is exactly why your light markers tend to run out a little bit quicker than your dark ones. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and lay my light down on the center panel. So that's my foundation layer. Then I'm going to add my shadow. So I'm gonna come back in with some shadow at the top and then again along the bottom. And then we're gonna, again, blend that out. So we're gonna pull that dark down and really blend it. And then we're gonna pull it out from the bottom as well and blend that. Okay, now some people like to use their blush, their, their sorry, their bullet tip for blending because it can take a little bit more abuse. You can press a little bit harder. Um, I usually do when I'm blending, I'll use my bullet tip. But just in the interest of being quick here, I'm gonna stick with the brush tip. So again, my base layer on my last panel. And then again, our shadow with the dark. And this time I'm gonna go all the way along the edge and the bottom. And then again, blending it out. It really is amazing how well these markers blend. I so I love them so much. I'm so addicted to them. I had a momentary heart attack when I saw them on the retirement list. I hadn't seen the new catalog yet. And when I first saw them on the retirement list, my heart stopped <laughs> very briefly until I realized, nope, they're in the catalog. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the reason they're on the retirement list, in case you missed my post, is because um, they are reconfiguring. They're going to be packaged in a two-pack instead of individually. Okay, so now we are going to fussy cut our umbrella. This is one of the easiest things ever to fussy cut. I'm just going to go over my little bump here and come around. And again, I'm, at, I'm leaving a little bit of a border. That's just gonna give me some leeway as I'm cutting these little inside curves. I find inside curves can be a little bit tricky to cut. So you just wanna make sure you keep your paper moving, not your scissors, and that's how you'll get it even. And then one more here. Just like that. Okay, so there is our umbrella. This guy should be pretty much dry by now. So I need to think about where I want my umbrella to go. And then I'm going to stamp my handle. So I'm gonna do that again in the basic gray. And we'll ink this up. And just to kind of get an idea, I'm gonna move my handle out of the way. Or sorry, move my umbrella out of the way and stamp my handle. 
All right, then we are going to pop up our umbrella with a couple of dimensionals. Just like, and again, lining up that little point at the top with your handle, that'll help you get it centered. Okay, and then I have, oh, I didn't tell you what the size of this was, did I? This piece is two and a quarter by three and a quarter. Okay, two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And um, I have my um, Fleur de Flamingo layer that is one eighth of an inch larger. So this is two and three eighths by three and three eighths. Okay, so that's gonna mat on there. So we will add a little bit of adhesive here. And we'll pop this on. Just like that. And just get that centered a little bit better there. Come on, work with me. There we go. All right. So this is going to get glued to the front of our card. I'm going to glue it flat. And it's going to go right about there. Looks good. Why not? So again, I'm going to leave my fast fuse, which is not cooperating tonight, and stick with the liquid glue. So we're going to put that on right about there. Maybe a little bit higher. There we go. Okay, and then we are going to make our little sentiment label. So this is a little tiny strip of uh, Fleur de Flamingo cardstock. It is how long? Two and a half inches by three quarters wide. Okay, so two and a half by three quarters. And we are going to stamp our sentiment, which says, no matter the weather, we're friends forever. And I'm gonna stamp it in the basic gray. It is fun to stamp um, in, a, in a dark color on, an, on a colored piece of cardstock. It just adds an extra little pop of color. So I'm gonna center that and stamp, okay? And then I wanted to do something to make the ends of my label or my, my piece look a little bit prettier. So what I did is I stamped and fussy cut, and I did this ahead of time so you don't have to watch me fussy cut these, but um, I stamped and fussy cut um, some little flowers from, which one is it? This one, no, this one. So I just cut the flowers. I didn't worry about the leaves, okay? And then what we're gonna do is just add a couple of glue dots. So one and two, and we're gonna pop that onto the ends, okay? And that's just gonna pretty up the ends of our little strip here so that the ends are not quite so straight and square. So we'll add another glue dot on that end, and then we'll pop this on this end, whoopsie. There we go. Just makes it a little bit prettier. Okay, and then that is going to pop onto the front of our card with a couple of dimensionals. Did I lose you guys? You're being very quiet. I'm, I always get nervous when I don't see any new comments coming up. <laughs> oh, nope, Deb, thanks for, the, thanks for the comment. Okay, good to know. <laughs> um, sometimes I just get nervous because uh, we have had a history of internet issues. And in fact, yeah, uh, Monday, I was in the middle of a staff meeting for school, of course, teleconferencing, and um, the internet totally crashed. So I missed my entire staff meeting. By the time I got back online, um, the staff meeting was over. <laughs> oh well, missed the staff meeting, darn. All right, we're gonna add a little winky winky to this because we can and because it's pretty. So we're gonna make our umbrella not only pink, but pink and sparkly. Who doesn't want a sparkly pink umbrella? I know I do. And then we are going to add a little sparkle to our flowers as well and make them shimmer and shine. There we go. There is card number two. Isn't that cute? So fun, so easy, so done. All right, moving on. This is card number three and I think this is my favorite and it's super simple. But I wanna show you, we're gonna make some of our own DSP. So you may remember on Tuesday, I had a card where I stamped and um, cut out the boots on the Gigum DSP. Well, simple stamping, we don't have DSP. We only have cardstock and ink. So we're gonna make our own DSP because we can. So I need my Coastal Cabana. So first thing we're gonna do is make our DSP for the boots. And we are gonna use the smallest little flower stamp, okay? So this is the this itty bitty one. Is it that one? Nope, yeah, it's that one. Okay, so I'm gonna stamp tone on tone 
on the Coastal Cabana. So this is similar to what I did on the first card, but this time I'm taking care to really stamp my images close together. I don't wanna overlap them, but I want them to be close together because these boots are pretty tiny, right? And if I stamp, if I space them out too much, we're not gonna see very much of the flowers. So I'm just kind of rotating my stamp so that I can kind of puzzle piece them in. Okay, and get them as close as I can. And that's one of the benefits of using photopolymer stamps. You can see where you're stamping. Okay, I'm gonna add a couple down here. There we go. So there is our homemade DSP. And then I'm gonna take my memento ink. You can use any black ink, doesn't have to be a memento for this one. And I'm gonna stamp my boots. So I'm gonna ink them up and stamp them on that homemade DSP. Okay, and then we're gonna fussy cut them. Now these are almost as easy as they, I think they're easier actually than the umbrella to cut because those in, there's no inside curves. <laughs> so we're just gonna cut, this time I'm cutting right up to the line um, and that's gonna give me some fun Coastal Cabana flowered rain boots. I don't know, I would wear a pair of boots that look like this, I absolutely would. So we are gonna just trim this. Told you this was easy to fussy cut. It's literally straight lines and then a couple of really gentle curves. Really easy to do. There we go. Aren't those cute? I love flowered rain boots. Okay, moving on. We are going to do our umbrella. So we're gonna use that same stamp, but I'm gonna clean it because I need to. <laughs> I don't want Coastal Cabana in my Fleur de Flamingo ink pad. So we're gonna grab the Fleur de Flamingo ink. And I'm gonna do the same thing to create my faux DSP here. So again, we're gonna stamp as close together as we can with our flower stamp. And try not to overlap. If you do, it's not the end of the world. But it's better not to if you can avoid it. It is hard to line this or to see where I'm stamping because I can't get my head right over it. This was much easier to do when I was making this <laughs> at my desk. Oh, see, that was too far away. Oh, well, that's okay. They're getting less crowded or less close together as I go here. Let's just snug that one in there and we'll snug that one in there. That should be enough. Oh, yeah, that should be enough. Okay, then we're going to stamp our umbrella. Now, this is the partially closed umbrella. So, again, I'm going to bring back my black ink. And I'm going to stamp this probably this way because I want to get as much of the close together ones as I can. Okay, and then we're going to fussy cut this one. So here we go. And again, I'm going to cut right up to the outer line on this. So I'm going to come around. i got to remember to stay so you guys can see me. I'm <laughs> pulling the thing right up to me, forgetting that you guys are watching. There we go. Okay, and then our curves. These are a little bit harder than the bigger one because the curves are tighter. So you gotta really rotate your paper. And I'm finding I need to rotate my scissors just a little bit as I get towards the top of the curve. There we go. Okay, get that out of the way. So now we have a pair of boots and an umbrella. So, so cute. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this background. Now, it's very similar to what we did on the last card. It's just a larger area. So to create this sort of wash technique, again, I'm going to take my light Daffodil Delight. And no, actually, I don't, Laura, because the Memento cleans just the same as, as water-based. So I don't find I need a separate chamois. Um, I ha and if I tried to do that in classes, it would never work. So... My chamois are all a disaster. That's okay. They still clean. So I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do a larger area. Okay. And I'm going to kind of come out in a very, very loose semicircle. It's not even a semicircle, but okay. So I'm just kind of going over it a few times. I need to make sure I get right off the edge. And the trick with this is you only want to go in one direction, right? I don't want to take and color this way because that will show, those brush strokes will show. I wanna just kinda of have a wash of color here. And the more I blend it, the better it's gonna look. So all I'm doing 
is laying down that very light daffodil. Okay, it's literally the scribble technique. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. Okay, super, super simple background. Okay, now that has to dry for a couple minutes because it will smear if we don't let the alcohol in that ink dry. Okay, so in the meantime, we are going to stamp our sentiment. So here I have a little strip. This again is a three quarter inch wide, but I think this is three inches maybe. Yep, three inches long um, strip of Daffodil Delight cardstock. And I'm gonna grab my Hello Sunshine stamp and my Daffodil Delight ink. And we are gonna stamp our sentiment closer to the left end. So I'm gonna stamp it fairly close, definitely not centered, okay? To the left of center which is the way some people would describe me. All right, so then we are going to cut our banner. So this again is your little tip for how to cut an even banner. If you just take and try to freehand this way and this way, you will not get an even banner, okay? So we're gonna start in the middle. We're gonna snip in as far as we want that V in our banner to go, okay? Then I'm gonna go from one corner into that, to the top of that snip, and then the other corner. Okay, and that's how you get a nice even banner end. All right, okay. Now we are gonna assemble our little umbrella and flowers. So again, I did these ahead of time. This is one of the larger flower stamps that I stamped in the Memento Black and then colored using my blends, okay? So I'm gonna glue these just to the back edge of the umbrella. I'm just gonna put a glue dot or two on the edge of my umbrella. Whoopsie, where's my flowers? And they're just gonna tuck in here like that. Okay, just a cute little accent. Okay, and they're gonna go on just about like that at a bit of an angle. So we'll put just a teeny bit of glue here. And we're gonna just pop that on there like that. Okay. All right, our boots, we're gonna wait. Uh, no, yeah, no, we can go ahead and do it. Why the heck not? No, we'll wait, because I want them to be straight. Okay, this should be pretty close to dry by now. So now we are going to take that same Hello Sunshine stamp, and we're going to do some um, repeated stamping on the background. So I'm stamping in Daffodil Delight, and again, I want to try and make sure these are all straight, okay? Not, um, I don't want to angle my stamp for this one, unlike um, sort of that random background stamping we were doing, because I, I don't want... I want the words to be legible, right? I don't want the words to be sideways or upside down. So I'm gonna add this one. I think that's good, okay? Super easy background. Now we are gonna bring in our sentiment strip, okay? And I'm just gonna place it where it's going to go because I need to know where to stamp my umbrella handle. So I'm gonna bring back the basic gray. No, I'm not, I'm gonna use Memento Black because that's what I used on everything else, and we want to be consistent. So here's my black, okay? And I'm, again, I'm going to think about where I want that, okay? And then I'm going to move this out of the way and stamp, okay? And then I can position my little sentiment banner in the right spot, all right? So we'll cover this up so we don't have a little disaster. And we're going to add some dimensionals to the back of our sentiment strip. Rid of our backings and then pop this on. So again, when I position this, I want to make sure that I'm looking at my the point on my umbrella, right? Just to make sure that it lines up. And then my boots are gonna go right about here. So I need a dimensional sort of right at the heel down here. And then I'm going to put just a glue dot where it's going to overlap my umbrella. Okay, and that's just so that it lies flat. So we're gonna just tuck those right in there like that. Isn't that cute? All right, put it on our background panel, or sorry, our card base rather. Our card base is Daffodil Delight. It is four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored in the middle at five and a half. We'll fold in half along our score line. And then we're gonna add just a quick bit of Tombow on here. And we're gonna pop this onto the front of our card, just like that. There we go, isn't that cute? 
I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, let me clean up my mess here. I, this is a really messy one. I've got stamps and ink everywhere and scraps. <laughs> Lots of fussy cutting tonight. Okay, so let me bring back the all of the samples. So we have one and two and three. There they are. Cute, cute, cute. Super simple, all with a $20 stamp set. Okay, so if this is not in your arsenal, this is one you need to get. Now you have time because this, as I said, is coming back in the new annual catalog, but it definitely needs to go on your wish list. Okay. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed those. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, for spending part of your Friday evening with me. And I will be back next week on Tuesday with another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Until then, have a fabulous weekend. Bye for now.